Hi, Judy from Witch Peace Craft. Welcome. Well, today is my April market update. I'll do a bit of a review on why I do markets for those new subscribers. How I went about getting ready for the market, the setup, the sales and my experiences. So let's get started. For those new subscribers, I don't do markets as such um, as a regular income or something. It's basically because I'm a prolific crafter and I don't have enough crochet or knitworthy friends or family to give it to. So the idea being that we would do a market stall occasionally and I would sell some stuff and every profits I make go to charity. Well over the years that grew and I was doing the local market, the beach market, say nine months of the year and raising quite a bit of money for local charities. I just kept back what the yarn cost me. My hours didn't go into the pricing because that was my hobby. It was just total um, cost of sale was the item and what it cost me to make it. But I still made profit. So that was fine and that went along for about five years until Christmas 2023. When the people who ran it, um, their contract ran out or their tender ran out and it was given to another group. And the new group coming in um, were quite mercenary. They put the fees up 80%. And even after I petitioned and approached them, no, they wouldn't change their mind. They were very difficult to deal with. And I thought, well, this was just for me to raise money for charity. There are other ways I can do it. So I stopped doing markets. Then I heard about these particular markets that I now do. They are randomly done throughout the year as fundraisers for charity. They are undercover, unlike my local market at the beach. My local market was open. You had to have a canopy. You had to be down there between 5.30 and 6 to set up to be ready for 8. These markets are undercover. You can bump in, as they call it, Saturday afternoon, set up and be ready to start your market at 8 o'clock Sunday, which runs till 2. And that is just awesome. Now the fees are a little higher than what I was used to paying, but they're not that bad. And the other thing you're required to do is donate an item from your stall to the raffle because that's how they fundraise for the charity. So basically people who come to the market are encouraged to make a gold coin donation and buy a raffle ticket into the giant raffle for the charity they're fundraising for. So. April Markets was for a charity called Strong Mums Foundation, which are mums who have children with cancer or are affected by serious terminal illness and have other children. And it's a group of mums got together to support each other and that's who they fundraise for in April. So when I got my stall booking for April, I was a little down because I wanted the corner stall and I got one stall in. My actual setup suits a corner better, but that's how it goes. So Thing and I went to bump in, as they call it, on Saturday afternoon and we started to set up. Well, one of the female organisers came over and, how are you going, da 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 da. And I said, I was disappointed I didn't get the corner stall and the lady there hadn't started to set up. And she went, let me check something. Hang on, I think she's cancelled. And she came back, she said, you can have that corner stall because she's cancelled. And she said, spread out, have both stalls. Anyway, what we did was we set up on the corner and spread out half into the stall. Because the lady next to me, who was really lovely, had pottery and ceramics and looked really cramped. So she spread out. So both of us had a stall and a half and gave us plenty of room for our stalls. And that was a good start before we went Sunday morning. It's always good to start on a positive note knowing that you know you're both going to have a good day. So this one was supposed to be a Mother's Day stall because our Mother's Day, a Mother's Day market sorry, the Mother's Day is in April and I thought there would be lots of children with their parents or dads shopping with children for presents for mum and I had quite a few amigurumis out and other things. Well lo and behold there were very few children there was a lot of mums saying I'm buying my own Mother's Day present and surprisingly quite a group of teenagers looking for items that had made, been made with recycled product. They were all about 
recycling, not buying new, saving the planet. And they're quite a big group of them. And that got me thinking for future markets. Anyway, the foot traffic wasn't great. And I just kept recording the sales. I didn't do any pre-market add up. I had my lovely friend Ulia there to help me and keep me company, which was awesome. And I must thank her again because it is great company and we have a laugh. And um, with I said it seems a little quieter and she's not as much foot traffic. So the market itself, as far as sales went, which I discovered after the market, they were pretty good. The first market I did with this group in November were the best market sales I've ever had in five years. This is going to be the best year. This particular April market wasn't far off it. It did really well, which surprised me because it seemed really quiet, but not as well as November. But prior to the markets, I'd been watching other podcasters and market people on what to do, and I always get God, your things are cheap. You're, you're too cheap. And a lot of them were talking about pricing. So I decided during the week prior to the market, I would review some of my pricing. And some of them I put up, but not my tea towels. They are three set price points, and people come looking for me for those price points and those tea towels. So even though my sales weren't as good as November, sorry, background noise, um, the actual net profit margin was almost the same because I had put them up. No one complained about my price increases, not one. The ladies who came looking for the tea towels, one of them said, I thought you'd put them up this market. And I said, no, I like the three price points. I think I'll stick to those for a while. And she said, that's really great because I actually came here looking for you. And she bought four tea towels. So what did I sell? Well, only one amigurumi, one little key ring of a mini monster. That was it. No other amigurumis. A few ladies looked at them for their kids, but they didn't buy any. I did sell some beanies, um, I, and it's always the same. The cat beanie and the chocolate bonbon beanie um, by Bag of Doe. Their tutorials, I'll put them in the description below, they both go straight away. They always sell. And it's still quite warm here. Um, what else did I sell? Let me see. So the tea towels is going to be the last story, and I'll explain why. What I did sell, and Pete, ladies were looking for, which I was really surprised, and I've had them probably in my market tub for a couple of years, is, you know, the long plastic bag holder tubes you make? Well, I make them out of tea towels that don't really suit being hung and I had made uh, quite a few and I had three left where you can stuff your plastic bags in the top and pull them out the bo bottom and then you store your plastic bags. I remember one lady buying one because she wanted to put her soft plastics that you can recycle in them and keep them hanging there till she was ready to put them in the big recycling bin. Anyway I sold three of those I have one left Ladies came looking for them and said, no one makes them anymore. And I was really surprised that they're back in favour. I did sell one of my beautiful shawls. The lady looked at it fairly early on in the market and she said, oh, I really like it. I'll have to think about it. And two hours later, she came back and paid and bought it. She loved it. And that it's just the fact that she loved it so much makes you feel good, that your work is beautiful, I love the cotton you used, all that sort of thing. So what else have I sold? I A lot of tea towels. I sold a baby poncho that I had made for a newborn to three month. I'm not even sure if I ever showed that on YouTube. Anyway, tea towels. I had 28 in stock. I was aiming for 30, but I couldn't be bothered doing any more. I sold... 23 but one was stolen so that's actually 24. Now it's not the first time I've had something stolen from a market stall but what surprises you is all the stall holders, holders we all do it we jump when we see the kids touching things or the teenagers but on both occasions it was people in their 30s or over 30. 
The market at Holloway's was a gentleman who held his motorcycle helmet against his body and I noticed him at the next door pinch something and put it in his helmet and I told the organisers and he was stopped and lo and behold when he dropped his helmet there was something from my stall and I don't even remember him stopping. Now when you steal from a market stall it is still classed as shoplifting and a criminal offence. So he was arrested. It's not, um, oh, it doesn't matter, it's just handmade goods that people, you know, I can help myself. No, when you steal from a market stall, you're shoplifting and it's a criminal offence. This particular lady bought th was buying three tea towels, but she wanted another one that was more expensive. And she said, why can't I have it for that price? And I said, because it's a much better quality and I can't afford to sell it for that price. And it was put back. And then she started fiddling with everything and Ulia was busy with a lady who wanted to learn about crochet and my friend Ulia is a certified crochet teacher and she was talking to her and while I was getting a bag to put her tea towels in she bought, I turned around to notice she was knocking a set of baby booties into her bag and I went, you know, you want those? Oh sorry, they just fell in but she deliberately knocked them in. And then when I gave her the bag, she took off like lightning. And I thought, hang on a minute. And lo and behold, the tea towel that she wouldn't pay the price for was gone. She'd stolen it. And Ulia said she, like I said to Ulia, she bolted straight out that door. So I couldn't report her because she was long gone. But yes, I had a tea towel stolen. But my philosophy is if you need it that desperately and you don't have the money, ask and I'll give it to you. I am that generous. I won't drop prices for someone, you know, I don't barter prices at my market. I've been known, I, there was a young girl who wanted the cat beanie and she was counting her pocket money and she had the money but I rounded it to $10 because I thought, you know, she was trying to make sure she had enough. So I said to her when she gave me the money, I said, you keep that, I just want $10. And her face lit up. That's what I will do. I won't barter if someone said, oh, I'm not paying that. Well, fine, don't pay it. Um, it's when, I don't know, I often do that. I had a grandmother who had three grandchildren and she had $30 and I think it came to 32 and I went, here, take them. Forget the other two. Because for me, it's not about making a living. I have a part-time job. It is about fundraising for charity. And what does my parents always say? Charity begins at home and it begins at my start market stall. So there you go. It was a success. I did enjoy it. The downer was having something stolen. It really, I don't know, it really makes me feel, oh, God, seriously? I just don't know. But let me know what you think. Do you think that people shoplift or steal from a market store because they think it's not that important or not a criminal offence? Let me know in the comments below. So... There could possibly be a Christmas in July market with a different group that all has put our name down for. I'll have to see how we go. But the next one for this particular market is November and then there's one in December. And I did go shopping somewhere for tea towels because someone on the market said, oh, my friend used to do them, but tea towels are too expensive now. She can't make money. And I said, well... I shop when the sales are on and I buy mine when they're on sale. And lo and behold, there were some tea towels on sale and I stopped on my way home after work and bought 20. So here are some of them. So these are the cheaper end of my market stall. This is the lower, lower price point and they were all $2 each to buy. This one says live life in a full bloom. This one says home, love living here, has a little house on it. There are plain ones, autumn leave ones. Look, I bought 20 of them and no, I didn't buy them all. I'm quite conscious of leaving some for other people. Here's two more I bought. That, that was the only one and it does have writing on it. Love grows here. Sorry. I live near the airport and the airport traffic is really busy today. So there you go. A bit of waffle about my market stall update. 
I did enjoy it. Um, future markets. Well, I do have a lot of amigurumi, so I won't be making as many small amigurumis. I do tea towels along the way. I don't always show them. I don't count the cotton I use in my yarn usage. It's just the tea towels are my number one seller and guarantee me a break-even point for every market. Um, and that's about it. I have a few videos to do on other subjects. I didn't want to combine them because it gets a bit confusing and the video gets too long. Anyway, guys, I don't know when I can upload this with the big um, gala dinner that's about to happen that's been taking months to organise. It's been extremely draining. I can't wait for Sunday morning and for it to be over. Anyway, stay well, stay safe. Let me know what your market experiences are. If you have a store or when you go to them, what do you expect? Leave a comment below. I'm always interested. I do want to improve my markets. I reviewed pricing. I reviewed my setup. My setup was better, but could still use some improvement. Because when you take stuff, you want to put it out. And as my friend said, less is best. Less is more, something like that. Anyway, bye for now. Mm -hmm.